call our January meeting, first meeting of the year, to order for Central Oklahoma Transportation and Parking Authority. Uh, must be a big day. We've got a big audience here, a lot of retirees. And uh, I noticed Rita Miller, they said in, in kind of her resume that she's kind of always helped organize retirement celebrations and employee gatherings. And so I didn't know where the punch and cookies were this morning. I mean, <laughs> so, but let me come down front. And, since I, I guess you're Rita, since you smiled. <laughs> well, they said Rita's, I guess, 19 years as a bus operator. But uh, 18 and a half. Probably. 18 and a half, all right. But uh, always could be counted on to plan retirement parties. So if you come up here and we'd like to recognize you on Metro Transit or Embark, right, but, all, uh, of them. all of them and everything. But you're the first one that I'm going to put on the spot, and I think they warned you a little bit. I always ask retirees to tell me one good thing that, about your job and one thing you'd improve. One good I'm thing. Right you want to be on TV, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> one good thing about the years that I served there was the elderly people. The elderly people were the most respectful people. They just was always happy to see you pulling up. They were always ready. They were on time, and they knew how to do weather conditions. And that was enjoyment. And, of course, I had a lot of fun, like you said, with uh, me and Linda Robinson. We did most of the retirement parties, and it was a blast. Now we don't have anybody to do retirement parties anymore, so I guess I'm going to have to go buy a hamburger. <laughs> and the improvement portion of it would be probably more buses, more stops, more areas. That would be a big improvement. This city's growing so much now until I want to come look at it or come ride the bus in about four years and see where all we're going now. But Embark, Copter, Metro Transit, they were good to me. And I thank you all for this opportunity. Come, come back and ride the streetcar. Yeah, that's going to be the yeah. that'll be the happy thing to do. Well, if so. I don't be in a wheelchair. Well, <laughs> well, the next lady up says she spent 14 years helping the elderly, so I guess you know Jackie. Yeah, yeah. Here, so, well, congratulations and well, hope you have a great you. retirement. Thank you. And uh, I guess this is your husband. This is my husband, Albert Miller. He's retired from the Air Force time seven years. And what are you all going to do? We're not going to do anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have uh, six grandkids in California, and every summer we're going to go see them. All right. Well, great. Well, have a great retirement. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Well, I got Let's take pictures. I've been oh, okay. here. Did you give them a good side? I tried. <laughs> I appreciate you speaking All about right. the elderly, speaking about me. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, thank they're, they're you. They're great. <laughs> so, okay. Next is Jackie Benson, and said so Jackie's worked 14, 14 and a half years as special ser, special services assistant, which was coordinating over 2,600 trips for senior citizens for medical appointments. So, Jackie, if you'd like to come up here. Come around here so you can be on TV. And, and I want Rita to come back. She has a good side. Oh, right. <laughs> my wife always said I'm supposed to stand this way for my right side. So, uh, here's your retirement resolution for 14 years and appreciation for I know a great job and a job well done. And I would ask you a couple of the same questions, but also, what was your job? I mean, coordinating trips is what. Um. I worked with seniors. 
The only qualification to ride the senior transportation is that you be 60 years of age and live in a service area. And we tried to con continually expand the service areas. So that was my job, meeting, assessing, qualifying, finding the driver, and that was it. Well, there's not one good thing, but I guess the thing I'm most proud of is the medical transportation that we started in northern Cleveland County, basically for more, because they had no transportation there at all. They were paying over $100 a trip for taxi rides to get to the doctor. So I feel that was a great accomplishment, and I hope that improves and we get more money, more chances to serve more. What would, what, is that what you do? That's, that's what I would love to improve, yes. We have the baby boomers coming on, and, and they're a little different than what the seniors now are, but they're going to be needing help. So. I recognize that. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh -huh. All right. I think she wants to take a picture. Uh... I'm going to work. <laughs> I don't want to just stay home and do nothing. All right. Well, good. All right. Well, thank uh -huh. you. Our next is Morel LaRue. Uh, I guess 16 years as a bus operator. Collect MG cars and has hosted several MG British car shows. So if you come up here and Did you drive an MG down here today? Not today. Not today. <laughs> well, here's a resolution from uh, an appreciation for your 16 years of service. And uh, I know everybody I've talked to, you've been a great bus operator, and I'm sure all your passengers loved you to death, I hope. And so, uh, and I'll ask you, too, what, uh, what's been the best part of your job and what's the best part of Embark and what, what would you approve? Well, uh, when Roger West retired, I had the privilege of taking over the trolleys for many years. I was in the, in the trolleys in Bricktown for many years, and that was my big enjoyment, meeting people from all over the world. And uh, a lot of them, some of them couldn't speak English, and it was communicating with them the best way you could. Uh, interesting fact is that 95% of them were going from Chicago to the West Coast. You very seldom got anybody going Route 66 from the West Coast East. Everybody was going, going to the West Coast, but driving the trolleys was my big, big joy. And then, of course, when they went away, I uh, wasn't ready to retire, so I was in a bus for the last three years or so. But uh, yeah, it was the trolleys was my big. What would you improve? Well, I don't want to. If this is the the, the, the venue for it. Sure, uh, um, <laughs> uh, I, I have pretty good asthma, and and smoking was. Richard Bishop and I talked about this at length, and he did whatever he could, and, but the smoking was horrible. I mean, the people trying to get on the bus and just putting out their cigarette and then coming on the bus, uh, it just would take your breath away. And, uh, you know, people did, the management did what they could, but they just can't stop people from smoking. But when they finally got the people at the terminal away from the, away from the, uh, the doors and then to the outer, outer section, that was a big help was in Route 14, which parked in the middle. I, I purposely took a route that I didn't have to go to the outside. But, uh, you know, like I say, if this is the, the right venue to somebody to please hear it, do what they can. But us drivers, the smoking is, 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 is my Well, I think the city council recently passed a statute prohibiting smoking on any city property, which would include the, include the transit centers, certainly. So. I'd say I didn't want to speak out of turn. Well, no, this is your time right now. Congratulate all three of the people retiring today and 
hope they have a very resourceful and healthy life in the future. And that's what's most important, I think, is to have a good, healthy life and enjoy retirement. So thank you. From Chairman, I'd like Rick, to, I mean, uh, Jason, excuse me, to introduce uh, Sheila or uh, Susan's or the executive, sec what, the executive secretary. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Sheila Holmes. She uh, joins us as our new executive assistant for the department, and she'll be working um, with uh, the trustees, obviously, very closely on a regular basis. And so, Sheila, if you don't mind just standing up mm -hmm. and um, and here, here she is. We're glad she's right. here. Glad you're here. Yes. All right. Do we have any citizens to be heard? If not, I would have a next items our minutes of our December meeting. I'd have a motion and or any corrections any of the trustees might have. If not, uh, approve our minutes. Move approval. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Consent docket. Um, I don't know if there's any items on there, the trustees, I think Jason maybe was just going to make a mention of C of receiving the financial report, which I think you all have a copy of the, of the audited financial, if you, got, if you have a comment or two. Yeah, we uh, wanted to make sure everybody uh, got a copy of the audited financial report. It wasn't in your packet. It's a separate binder with the blue and green cover. I wanted to direct you um, just to a, a couple of places in the report. Um, this is, again, our audited financial report for the period ending June 30th, 2015. And you can find the um, independent auditor's report on financial statements and supplementary information beginning on page three. And I did want to note that the auditor indicated the financial statements present fairly in all material aspects the respective financial position of the business type activities and funds for June 30th, 2015. So we had a, uh, a, a good, uh, clean audit, no findings, and I wanted to, <clears throat> excuse me, make sure I pointed that out. Um, the other thing uh, to mention is there is a uh, section uh, that begins on page 13 uh, titled, uh, basic financial statements. And then on page 14 uh, begins each of those uh, financials. And I wanted to uh, mention that the annual financial report is set up similar to our budget to actual, actuals where you'll notice the entire uh, trust is combined, uh, parking um, and transit. And then as you go through the report, you'll see the different uh, business enterprises broke out individually. Um, the last thing to mention is I did want to uh, have one comment on our net position, and I'm looking on page 14, but you'll notice our net position for the year or the difference between our assets and liabilities uh, finished at $73,343,139. That's an increase of about 226000 from our net position in 2014. Um, the reason I wanted to comment on this is because I did want to point out and make sure that the trustees were aware that we have a new um, liability included for 2015 that was not included in 2014. In fact, if you look at the non-current liability section, you'll see a pension liability recognized in 2015 of $5 million, actually $5.1 million. So when you think about, you know, a year-to-year -year comparison, Looking at our net position, assets minus liabilities, keep in mind that 2015 has an additional $5.1 million liability that we did not have on this financial statement in 2014. And the reason we're including that, or I should say the reason why it is included in our financial report, is that's simply the result of new accounting rules and regulations. Um, and so with that, I'll be, able to, I'll be happy to answer any other questions. All right. Uh, any questions of any of the trustees on that item? Are there any other items that any of the trustees would like a discussion on? If not, I would have a motion to approve our consent docket. Move approval of this consent docket. 
All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Items for individual consideration. We've got several items. Uh, I would, at this time, though, item H, I, and J are to enter into executive session, and I would have a motion to enter into executive session for those three items. So moved. And this is a voice, James? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you. Uh, item A is approval of sole source professional service agreement with Jenkins RTS LLC for technical assistance in standing up streetcar operations. Yeah, this, this item is, um, as you mentioned, a professional services agreement with Jenkins RTS. As we begin uh, standing up streetcar operations uh, and preparing to be the operator of the modern streetcar, you know, one of the things that's important to us is to make sure, you know, we um, as staff um, can, can leverage all resources available to make sure that we position ourselves for the most successful startup for the modern streetcar that we possibly can. Um, last month we approved a contract with SOJ uh, Consulting to help us develop a, an RFP, an operations plan, and some other tasks associated with operations. This agreement is, um, again, with Jenkins RTS, an individual by the name of um, Austin Jenkins, who uh, brings to us about 40 years of transit experience, uh, direct experience managing light rail in Denver and Seattle, along with uh, managing the uh, startup of the South Lake Union streetcar. And so what we are uh, fortunate enough to be able to do is enter into this agreement and uh, have um, Jenkins RTS assist us with some of the um, pending uh, operation plan reviews, equipment list reviews, um, having, again, another uh, uh, set of eyes or um, uh, additional expertise uh, to help us uh, review some of the final uh, uh, plans for the storage and maintenance facility and mainline design. So really, um, this, is, uh, this agreement with uh, Jenkins will be an extension of our staff helping us prepare for the operations for the streetcar. Um, a lot of the work is going to be done um, off-site and through conference calls. Uh, Mr. Jenkins will be um, on-site once a month uh, for various workshops, face-to-face -face meetings. So we expect to be working very closely with him as we move forward. Um, the agreement is for six months with an estimated cost of $50,000. All right, thank you. And I think the trustees will have noticed in their packet we asked last at the last meeting for us to add a program report for the streetcar operations so each month we can get an update and we had a great uh, report in the back of the packet for that so I appreciate it from staff to get that so any questions on item A if not I will. Uh, excuse me just a quick question not directly related but could you help me remember did we uh, uh, <clears throat> make a decision at this point as to whether or not a fee would be charged to ride the streetcar, and if so, have we been we had, looking at a price or anything? We have not uh, took any formal action through um, the COTPA Trust or the City Council in terms of um, a fare for the streetcar. Um, we will be bringing um, recommendations to both those bodies in the future uh, yeah. for what the fare, if there is one, what it would be. Thank you. It's just that on occasions I get that question, uh, and so it's good to know it's undecided. Well, and I would, ex I would expect us to, um, like other streetcars that have launched a new service, a certain period of time the streetcar would be free. Yes. Um, yes. It's, so that's kind of the direction that we're looking at, and it's just how, at what time is appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. All right. Any other questions? If not, I have a motion to approve item A. I move. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? All right. Item B is to authorize the administrator to receive contract and bonds and lease and, and issue a notice to proceed with the tenant build-out phase two of the Arts District garage, which is, uh, Jason told me this morning, is the final build-out other than one 1,100-square-foot space that is not leased, but... Uh, this would be the final build-out of the garage, so. Right. 
Yeah, and with uh, authorization um, on this item, um, I'll be able to give the successful bidder, which in this case is Downey Contracting, for an amount of $732,527. Uh, I'll be able to authorize them in terms of giving them a notice to proceed where they can begin securing their bonds, uh, mobilizing for the project, and then we will bring the actual contract and bonds back to the board in February for final approval. All right. No questions. I'd have a motion to approve item B. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Item C is approval of final plans and building documents for the fleet management maintenance facility improvements and authorize the administrator to advertise and release for bidding documents. Yeah, this project is one of the projects that we've uh, included in our five-year capital plan that was approved uh, by the trustees back at the beginning of the fiscal year. Um, it's one uh, package uh, consisting of two projects. Uh, we're going to have uh, improvements made to both of the buildings uh, at the 2000 South May facility, and these are both uh, fleet maintenance buildings. So the first project, MB1257, includes uh, the installation of a new uh, fire suppression system in the uh, fleet maintenance facility where we work on the buses. It's the facility you've been in with all the different bus bays and equipment. Uh, most of the mechanics work out of that facility. So we're installing a fire suppression system um, in that building. We're adding a paint booth. Uh, the paint booth will be ventilated and climate controlled, which will make it uh, just a, a safer work environment and an improvement over what we have now. Um, and then we also include a bid alternate for lighting upgrades and ceiling, retile, ceiling tile replacement in that building. Um, the other part of the package, uh, project number MB1276, is repairs and upgrades to the service building. This is the building where the buses um, are pulled in, um, our service technicians uh, check the fluids, uh, do uh, various cleaning, that kind of thing. What we're wanting to do here is expand that building to the south to include uh, restrooms, uh, break room. Um, we're also going to replace uh, uh, a wall, the north wall of that building. It's currently a metal wall that's rusted out. We're going to take about eight feet of that wall and replace it with the cement blocks. Um, and so with um, approval of this item today, um, we will release those final bidding documents and then bring back um, what we would expect to be an award of contract to the board in the coming months. All right, thank you. Any questions? And I'd have a motion to approve item C. All in favor? Opposed? Item D is approval of a contract with Monarch Marketing Group for media buying and consultant services. Morning. Good morning. Yes, this is for uh, the ability for us to purchase media, uh, such as TV advertising or radio or newsprint. Uh, this uh, vendor will help us make uh, the best choices based on uh, our, the reach that we can attain uh, for the dollar spent. Uh, and they also provide consulting services, such as uh, helping us identify uh, uh, new media options and opportunities that we can uh, utilized to get the word out about the various services we provide. All right. Any questions? Well, thank you. Uh, then I'd have a motion to approve the item. All in favor? Opposed? Item E is approval of a multi-year agreement with the City of Edmond to establish authority for the oversight of any Edmond public trans transportation services and accountability for any federal grant funds made available for Edmund's service retroactive to July 1st of 2015. Jason. This is our agreement that we uh, <clears throat> have in place with Edmund. Um, it was time for renewal. Um, as mentioned, um, it's retroactive to July 1st of 2015. It's a five-year agreement expiring June 30th, uh, 2020. And as the um, designated recipient of uh, federal funds for the Oklahoma City urbanized area. Uh, one of the responsibilities we um, as COTPA have is to make sure that any subrecipients of federal funds comply with the same FTA rules and regulations that we do. And so what this agreement does is it really just sets out um, 
some assurances that uh, Edmund will comply with those same FTA regulations, whether it be you know, drug and alcohol, um, DBE requirements, procurement requirements, um, all those various requirements, I believe, are included on page two of the agreement. Um, so that's part of what this agreement does. The other uh, part is basically a five-year funding plan. And, of course, that's subject to change depending on um, the amount of uh, formula funding that we receive, but it is a five-year plan that we're working towards. Um, and so we just appreciate uh, Edmund's uh, partnership and being able to work with them to support transit in the region. All right. Thank you. Any comments, Kay? No. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. If there's no questions, then I have a motion to approve the item. Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Item F is approval of an agreement for for professional services with Mary Kay Fox. Yes, <clears throat> Mary Kay Fox is our uh, special services uh, division manager. Um, she uh, oversees many of the programs that Ms. Beeson spoke about earlier, and she has um, advised us of her retirement effective this month. So hopefully um, we'll have Mary Kay Fox back with us next month, recognizing her for all of her accomplishments. Um, so what that means is it's a time of transition, and we are in the process of training, certainly not replacing, but training someone to uh, take over Mary Kay's responsibilities. And she has agreed to uh, continue on um, working with us as we train that new person and continue to um, develop those programs. So um, I think what this, this agreement will do will essentially allow for a smooth transition as someone else uh, takes over those programs and responsibilities. We're appreciative of her uh, willing to give us a hand as we make that transition. All right. Thank you. Uh, if I have no questions, I'd have a motion to approve item F. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Our last item is approval of a bus system of bus system changes to expand the pilot program for evening service and adjust schedules for improved schedule adherence. Right, this item here is uh, an expansion of our pilot program for evening service. Uh, back um, in July when the board approved the budget, there was funding approved for additional uh, fixed route bus service until midnight on routes 5 and routes 13. Um, the action we're taking today here actually puts those changes into place effective January 25th. So I'm um, excited to announce the fact that our, our night service um, is expanding. We'll now have four routes out until midnight, um, again running um, one hour frequencies from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, route 5, as you'll recall, um, serves Classen, north of downtown, um, also western, um, over to Penn, north to uh, Memorial, and then Memorial on all the way out to uh, Mercy Hospital. And Route 5 is one of the busiest routes that we have um, in our system. Um, uh, route 23 and Route 5 are easily our, our two busiest routes, and we now, with this action, will have both of those routes out until midnight. Route 13 in um, is actually a variation of the Route 13 that we run in the daytime. As you'll notice, it runs south on western. It serves um, Southwest 74th um, on the west end out to OCCC, on the east end over to the Santa Fe area. And then um, because of the uh, lighter uh, traffic conditions we normally experience in the evening, we have a little more time on this route than what we do during the day. So we've expanded this route to also pick up uh, part of, I believe it is Route that serves um, all the way down to Southwest 104th Street. So um, our night service now will have a north side cross town, a south side cross town, a route serving the far north, and a route serving the far, far south. So uh, we're pleased with uh, the progress we've made in this area. And um, again, with the approval of this item, these changes will go into effect on the 25th. What, just out of curiosity, I mean, I know with cameras, but what security do we have with these late night services? Yeah, so um, at the each one of these uh, routes, they, they pulse at the transit center um, on the hour. Um, we have security guards on site at the transit center until uh, 1130. Yeah. Okay. 
So we do, you know, we do not open the transit center up for um, customers, um, you know, until midnight. Um, but we do have security there on site, and of course the location is lit. But the operators are are capable of being in communication should any oh, incident occur. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, the operators uh, do have access to the operator. Uh, Break room that's at the transit center. Well, I'm more concerned we about have, mid, you know, midnight running yeah. the service somewhere. And, and we always have a route supervisor on duty, uh, so we have a route supervisor that's out until midnight that's monitoring the radios and the computers and such. So yes, there's always a way for them to communicate, uh, communicate and contact if they need assistance. Right. Jason, I think this is uh, very helpful, especially from the South Oklahoma City perspective, providing late night service along I-240. You know a growing retail area and it allows people who uh, have to work during the day but shop at night to still utilize the bus services as well as having pretty close access to Oklahoma City Community College for those late night uh, classes so thank you good well thank the City Council for, for the funding <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Jason, and I would just like to add and just double down on what Councilman Greenwell just said. You know, thank, and thanks to the COPPA board, too, this, and City Council, this is a big deal. I teach over at Jefferson Middle School on the south side, and just like you just described, a lot of parents work those non-traditional nine to five hours are working overnight, and they're often worried, how am I going to get my kid picked up when, you know, it's a mom and dad, and we're depending on just one car. So this is a really big deal. I hear it from my students. I hear it from parents. The South Side will be greatly served by this. And as Jason, as you pointed out, being able to get from home to the hospital out on Mercy, that's a big deal too. So I actually think the night service that we are working to provide is a, a game changer for our city. It's going to not just be for riders who um, depend on it, but I think eventually you're going to find that there are people um, who are what we call choice riders who are going to want to use this service to move around all parts of our city too so I just want to say I'm very encouraged by this. James just to follow up a little bit more on that when the uh, Oklahoma City uh, I'm sorry the Oklahoma Municipal Library System opened up a temporary uh, location at the Almonte uh, shopping center on 59th and May they had hundreds and hundreds of new uh, individuals accessing the library system and again, many times those family units only had uh, one vehicle and uh, depending upon which spouse had access to it and who was working at what time, they were very limited so they couldn't utilize a library just a few miles to the west, Southern Oaks. And uh, so it really brings to light how many families, even in this current day of multiple cars per household, still only have uh, one vehicle and sometimes no vehicle to access so many needs. So it, it is truly very important. Thank you. Thank you. And it will be, and I'm sure you'll keep us surprised of it, but I think it'll be interesting to see what the ridership is like. Is it? I'm sure it will grow. Uh, so. Right, yeah, we'll soon be incorporating it into our transit system report, reporting on um, all night service. Uh, all right. Do I have a motion to approve the item? All in favor? Opposed? All right. Uh, next item is ratification and claims and payroll for uh, the period December 1st through December 31st. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Uh, now our financial re reports, the schedule of revenues and expenditures and budget to actual for the uh, five months ended uh, November 30th. And I think Jason had just a couple of items to mention. I'd like to start with uh, looking at page two in the uh, financial reports. This is our budget to actuals for our transportation operations division. Um, looking at the operating revenues, um, our passenger uh, fare box revenue continues to be above target. We're at about 102.9% of uh, what we had anticipated at this point in time when we developed our budget. Uh, that's comparable to where we were uh, last month. Um, federal grant revenue, as you'll notice, is 
91% of the budget or just about 167,000 uh, less than what we had estimated. And this is, uh, we've gained some considerable ground on um, our reimbursements. I've talked about it in uh, uh, months past about uh, some of the issues we had with timing and, and receiving our reimbursements. But since the last financial report, um, we have received an additional $861,000 in federal grant revenue, and that's reflected in the financial that you have in front of you today. Um, so total operating uh, revenues are about 96% of what we had expected. Um, looking at operating expenditures, uh, personal services continue to remain under budget. We're at about 91% of what we would expect. And again, a lot of that has to do with, uh, in fact, most of that has to do with vacancies. We have vacancies um, in our bus operator position, uh, positions. And um, for a good part of the year, we had some administrative vacancies, although we're beginning to get those filled. And that's reflected in those numbers. Um, other services and fees were at just about 92% of the budget. Supplies actually uh, continue to be considerably under budget. We're at about 67% of where we had expected, or about $582,000 under. Um, I will say about 302000 of that is directly um, attributable to lower fuel prices than what we had estimated when we put the budget together. So that's where most of that is coming from. Um, looking at our total um, excess of operating uh, income after uh, payments and transfers, we're at about 1.35 uh, million more in revenue than expenditures um, through uh, November of, of 2015. Um, on the parking operations, um, again, looking at operating revenues, um, overall revenue is about 3.5% more than what we had expected at this time when we developed the budget. Uh, most of our uh, revenue uh, continues to be from monthly uh, contract parkers. Um, operating expenditures, on the other hand, um, for personnel services, we're at about 74% of the budget. Again, that's due to vacancies that we've had, um, particularly in the parking manager position. Um, other services and fees, you'll notice, is showing to be about 495000 under budget, or about 62%. I will say that um, these numbers do not reflect uh, a, a, a monthly invoice that we normally pay to Republic Parking for management of the parking garages. Due to timing, um, we did not get it in the November uh, financials. So you're looking at roughly an additional 200000 on expenditures um, that we would have had had we not had that timing issue. Uh, but looking down at our total excess of revenues over expenditures, um, we are at 1.8 million um, year-to-date through November on, on parking operations. Uh, looking at the river, um, again, operating revenues, um, they're continuing to um, decline. It's not with, with, with not operating any service right now. That's not um, too surprising, um, although in order for us to recover the variance, we're at about 67% of what we had estimated. We're, we're really going to need to have a strong spring when we start uh, revenue service back up. Um, our general revenue um, continues to be a little bit above um, our estimate. We're about 5% over. Our concessions and our non-transit revenue are really what's impacting that number and pulling our overall revenues down. And part of that is because we're running less specialty cruises we're running less charters. As you'll recall, we had some charters cancel in May. And so that's really what the, what's causing the negative variance on the revenues is that non-transit uh, revenue that we had budgeted. And then looking at operating expenditures, um, if you look at the other services and fees category, this is the uh, line where the uh, payment to HMS Global is made from. Um, we're at about 110% of what we had estimated. And basically, we have one extra payment um, to HMS in, in this financial than what we had budgeted for. We had budgeted for five, um, and we'd actually had, I believe it was uh, six payments. So with that, I'll be glad to answer any questions on the financials. All right. Any questions by any of the trustees? And I'd hear a motion to receive our financial reports. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you.
our program reports. Uh, we now have five programs to report on, first being transit system. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, trustees, good morning. Thanks for having us. Indeed, I'm going to touch on four topics, and Jason is at the end of the group reports going to address the modern streetcar. The four topics I'd like to address are safety, ridership, on-time performance, and our year-to-date report card. We caused seven preventable accidents during the month of November 2015, which is the same number as we caused the previous month. This number is a lot higher than average, and we're doing all possible to bring the number down. If there is a uh, fortunate aspect, it is that the majority of these seven accidents were resulted in zero dollars or uh, health loss. And as I mentioned, you know, I want to kind of reiterate that we have the strictest non-preventable um, definition possible. And in one case in this previous or during the month of November, our vehicle would not have been involved in an accident if not for a motorist pulling out and striking our vehicle. But we viewed it very critically and saw that we could have allowed, we should have anticipated and allowed more room for that vehicle, the, the, the chance that that would happen. There's almost no other system that would, it's, it's like a charging foul in the thunder, uh, in the thunder game. But our operator and our other operators would learn from allowing a bigger cushion just to give you a, a quick sense, and, and preventable accidents are horrible, but they are a tremendous training tool. And um, when you have zero tolerance, and in this case, almost negative zero tolerance, if there is such a thing, um, our drivers will learn from it and allow even a little more room so that the motorist can make an air that, uh, and still be safe. Our three month preventable accident rate is 5.3 preventables per month and we had experienced four uh, non-preventable accidents during the, during the uh, month of November. Ridership, if you kindly take a quick look up, you'll see that we, uh, our fixed route Monday through Friday ridership was uh, 11,501 passengers per day compared to 10,789, which is a 6.6% increase year over year. Our Saturday ridership, was down 2% uh, in our fixed route system, and that was primarily because one of the four Saturdays was a bad weather day, which didn't exist the previous year. Our downtown Discovery Saturday ridership was up 46%, which is encouraging, but we had a particularly low uh, Saturday ridership during uh, November 2014. Year to date, our overall cumulative growth in fixed route ridership is up 5%. And as you'll see, we're north to quota uh, when we get to the, uh, our report card. Our new night service, thank you, Michael. Our new night service declined to 3,150 passengers from 4,150. Compared another way, it's 158, as you can see, per night compared to 189. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One is the seasonal drop between October and November. And this is our first, you know, uh, being in the fall, and my suspicion is that uh, the effect of reduced ridership when the weather is inclement is increased uh, due to the fact that it's also dark. There's another factor, and that is over Thanksgiving, the two days that were adjacent to Thanksgiving, were extremely low ridership of 100 passengers per day. But I can tell you, um, kind of like uh, Trustee Greenwell pointed out, an awful lot of people really love this service and are really, really looking forward to our 100% increase later this month, which will, you know, completely service the north and south where the east and west has uh, taken precedence. Our on-time performance uh, was 63.3%, which is a 8.8% decrease compared to November 2014 and a 2.2% drop from the previous month. This is something that we're working on on a you know, daily basis and very intensely. And there are two, you know, I'm, I'm 
I'm always sorry to present any type of excuse, but two of the 20 days were bad weather days, and as I mentioned a couple of times, there is no concession for that. So 10% of our days were um, bad weather, which just, you know, tubes the whole month, frankly. But one thing that we're going to do is Chip, who is the assistant planner, is going to, and it's a non-traditional role, he's going to spend a portion of his days reviewing the previous day's activities. And we have this wonderful system, AVO, where we can look to uh, determine where there were uh, gaps in our service and how we could better respond. And Chip's going to dedicate a portion of every day going forward starting next week uh, reviewing this in a very intense way, and that will really assist us in identifying the problems and coming up with at least the best possible cure to uh, uh, minimize our, our lack of performance, which is um, in the winter, it becomes even more important. And our fellows, the fellows that retired, you know, they really appreciate our passengers, and the last thing that they want to do is leave anybody out in the cold for longer than possible. Okay, our report card, I'll just run through, <clears throat> pardon me, I'll run through the percentages in our um, number of passengers per service hour, we're at 91%. Our number of passengers per operating day, we're at 102%. Our on-time bus arrivals, we're at 88% of goal. Number of miles driven between road calls is 122%. Vehicle accidents is 67% over our goal, which is bad and our passenger claims is 10% over our goal, which is not what we're trying to do. I'd like to say one quick thing, too, if you don't mind. Um, I guess, uh, of course, your questions and additional information, but this couple days ago, I uh, passed my one-year anniversary working for you all, and I got to tell you, it's a real honor, and I just love this place and the people here. I appreciate you all having me. Well, we're glad you're here. And, Thank you so much. And, uh, I, since you're not retiring, I won't ask you my two questions. Well, it's good. To, <laughs> I'm not, it's good to hear that you're enjoying it. So. That's very nice of you, Chairman. We we answer your two questions about every 20 minutes here. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. All right. Long range plan. Well, as Kevin kind of indicated, I guess there's a lot to kind of see as maybe a happy new year. Okay. Some, some things off to a good start. I want to mention a few things that are about long-range planning activities and just kind of remind you all that this kind of report really kind of helps show how that long-range plan you adopted 15 years ago in the fixed guideway plan, how a lot of times that relates to something that we're doing now, okay? So one thing that is probably the most interesting that shows up in the bullets is something called the Smart City Challenge by the US DOT. Uh, federal government is going to wind up awarding one city in America a $40 million grant that's also going to be added to by the Vulcan Corporation, $10 million for uh, that city that comes up with really a very bold, kind of innovative, futuristic approach to moving people or freight, mainly people. And I've never really seen a, a private company step up with the federal government to do this. Uh, the chances of getting that means it's pretty low chance of any, of any city getting it. Uh, they'll select five finalists. Well, there's a number of departments in the city that are kind of working on this, and definitely Kotpa is one of those cities. And so far, the area of focus will probably be something like downtown and going out the Northwest, class and the Northwest Expressway, but probably some, a little bit more of the city as well. But they want you to focus on a part of the city and, and look at a lot of things that <laughs> were almost off of uh, like that 21st century show that Walter Cronkite would sponsor back in the 1960s, you know, 50 years ago. So, you know, they're looking for, but they're looking for things that can actually be done in that first three years after the grant's awarded. So it's a chance for the city to try to put its best foot forward and look a lot at transportation, especially transit possibilities. A little bit more on the shorter term, uh, ACOG has kicked off something called the congestion management process. Every five years or so, they have to look at that. And, you know, the widening of roads is probably going to be less and less likely. And so whether it's technology or transit or types of services, whether that's van pool or whatever, uh, they want us to be involved in that process to try to help figure out what to do about congestion that's probably going to come, you know, someday. You know, we're, we're fortunate we don't really have a rush hour. Sometimes it feels like it's just a rush half hour. But congestion is a real problem. Uh, ACOG also, just a reminder, we mentioned it last month, 
Uh, last month is when six cities came together to sign that memorandum of understanding to uh, band together and put together funds to further explore a regional transit authority. So you know, we look for them to keep going with that. And, um, and then another little thing to kind of mention about the new bu night bus service. You know, 15 years ago, that was really one of the things that, that, the, that the trustees really wanted to do was expand that. And, you know, this is a pretty tremendous thing. That Long Range Plan also talked about things like how it would be great to have special event shuttles like on New Year's Eve, et cetera. And now this means that really uh, five nights a week a person could get on a bus at eight miles from downtown at 119th and Southwestern or 12, 15 miles away at, at Mercy and come in for a nighttime event or something like that and get on the bus at 11 or 10 and still get home, you know, or, or where their car is. And that's really kind of an interesting thing that would have been a major event for us to plan for. Now it will be five nights a week. And so that's really kind of an exciting thing. Then the last thing I want to mention is that all of our long-range plans have always talked about this need for a stable funding source. And local 501c3, uh, the Alliance for Public Transportation, is getting people who want to meet next week to learn what other cities have done to establish a dedicated funding source. And that will be at, actually held at ACOG over in Bricktown at 1 o'clock next Tuesday. And I think it's going to be a one-hour meeting, but it's going to be a chance to learn what if a city has done recently around the country to establish that dedicated funding source, usually some kind of dedicated tax. And so, you know, we're always glad for partners like that that are looking out for the future of transit and the funding of transit in the region. So with that, uh, be glad to answer any questions. Excuse me, you said it's 1 o'clock Tuesday at ACOG? 1 o'clock Tuesday at ACOG, and they're located in Bricktown at 21 East Main. Uh, the material from the APT shows that people can usually just park at a meter on the street there. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, all right. Our parking system report. <clears throat> well, tell us what you like about your job. No. <laughs> <laughs> Being here. Being here. Um, <laughs> Chairman, trustees, thanks for having me for first meeting. It's been an exciting 50 days. <clears throat> um, the month of November, we continued overselling monthly parking passes to a tune of 265 over last year. Event revenues continue to appear to be lower uh, than previous years. However, that has to do with some reporting, uh, some modifications in reporting, um, converting some of our, in 2014, we were doing uh, 2015, we started billing some validations and separating the event revenue, uh, but we are capturing the majority of that revenue. November, uh, compared to last November, revenues are over or above $57,000. Again, mostly due to overselling uh, the monthly parking passes. Uh, <clears throat> tenant lease discounts. Um, Due to the lack of um, uh, bathrooms, OKC, uh, Public School Foundation, um, will continue receiving their uh, discounted rent. And then, um, <clears throat> sorry. Parking services, as you all know, in fiscal year 2015, uh, the Century Center garage was closed for the majority of the fiscal year to, do, to complete some repairs. In early December, the contractor contacted me, and um, what we see above us in the pictures is um, some warranty work that was completed uh, in the month of December. Um, the sealant on the helix, unfortunately, some water uh, got into it during its curing process last year and caused that damage on the left photo. On the right fo photo, you'll see um, after they removed all that damaged um, epoxy and replaced it to protect the garage uh, long term from water damage and um, corrosion from salt. In, in the second slide, you'll see the uh, down ramp of the helix on the third floor where they had removed, uh, again, some damaged areas and um, replaced it. 
<clears throat> Santa Fe Elevators, uh, pleased to announce that uh, work last week began on the fourth and final uh, uh, elevator modification. <clears throat> the new, the um, new motor and hostway machinery is now installed and they're currently working on the wiring uh, of the elevator. <clears throat> I expect that project to be completed towards the end of February. Uh, during this process, we found that some cables um, had, had um, started to deteriorate on that elevator. I'll have to, uh, we have already secured bids for that additional work and that will be a separate project that will go on in conjunction with the uh, replacement of the cab. <clears throat> um, in, in speaking of elevators, I want to explain a, a break-in period. These elevators all have very, very sensitive safety controls. Um, as such, there's a break-in period where the cables will stretch um, as they begin to be used. Uh, when those safety features are triggered, the elevator will obviously shut down in order to prevent, in order to increase life safety of everybody. Um, these outages are being promptly reviewed um, and responded to. Every, every weekday morning, staff prior to 7 a.m. has inspected every elevator in all of our facilities to make sure that they're running optimal. Should they not be, we are seeking um, uh, assistance from our uh, subcontractors, the elevator repair folks. <clears throat> Corey, while we're talking about elevators, what's the status of the elevator in the Arts District garage? Thank you for that question. It, that elevator, uh, we had a safety alarm go off where it exceeded its uh, weight capacity. Again, I'm sorry, I won't ride it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, I, I'd like to elaborate on that. It, it, <clears throat> the contractor, um, is due out next week. Um, they uh, were supposed to be out this week and bring in um, extra weights. They need to operate that elevate. They need to exceed the weight capacity by 25% in order to clear out that um, code. Um, it, that's a lot of uh, metal weights that they need to bring in. Um, so uh, there was a scheduling problem and that's why that hasn't been repaired this week. Next week, COPPA will be um, issuing an invitation for bid. Very similar to the city's IFB uh, for elevator maintenance, that will provide uh, annual, monthly and annual maintenance to include inspections and repairs. Um, the great thing about that will be uh, the terms are two years with two possible one-year extensions. The intent is to have all of our parking garages serviced by one subcontractor. <clears throat> um, and the, um, versus as it is right now with two vendors. Corey, I think the other thing, we're kind of taking a fresh look at how we're doing that. And a lot of the new agreement's going to be preventative maintenance or regular inspections, not just the opportunity to call somebody when it breaks down. It, that, that is correct. They're, they're required to be proactive and provide preventative maintenance. I have to go back and ask about the Santa Fe uh, elevators. Now, you say three of them are up and running and the fourth one is being worked on. When that one's complete, will the third one in the atrium not be replaced and repaired or is it already finished? No, the, uh, the, all of the uh, cabs and elevators will be replaced when the project is finished so yeah by the end of February by the end of February yeah the last so, one but we're, so both sides of the tower elevator yes in fact uh, one side of the tower one, one elevator in the tower has already been replaced with new equipment and it should be one of those that's functioning correct today. so it's right. up and running now it's up yeah. and running now and then we'll do the the other one and, and I think last month I had reported that we expected the project to be done in January, but as Corey had mentioned, we now have some cables that we need to replace, which, which will extend it through February. But yes, all four will be replaced. 
But part of the delay of uh, the fourth and final elevator and uh, being replaced um, is I delayed the work uh, of uh, on that elevator as uh, the third and last one. Um, while it was perfectly safe, um, it had some sounds that were originate that you could hear in the cab and the customers were not going to look fondly upon that. Uh, so uh, having that fixed uh, added to the delay of the fourth one being shut down and the work to be started. Thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, marketing, customer relations, and technology. Good morning. Morning. And happy new year. Uh, just real quick, uh, I've got a couple of slides for you, but first I'd like just to mention uh, that we still can uh, see a high use of our Wi-Fi services. Uh, just in the month of November, we saw about 35 uh, gigabytes of use per day, uh, and in December, we saw about 31. So that's pretty much on par, and with the, the decreased number of service days in December, uh, we probably that's right level with where it should be. I uh, also wanted to uh, point out, this time of year, we send out uh, renewal letters to those who participate in a program called Guaranteed Ride Home. Uh, that Guaranteed Ride Home uh, program is designed to rescue commuters uh, who are worried about how they'll uh, get home uh, in case an emergency uh, arises. And so uh, what we want to do is make sure that they know that they can get, uh, they have a Guaranteed Ride Home. Uh, and this program allows them uh, to use public transit with peace of mind and just, again, knowing uh, that they can ride with confidence uh, with this program. And what we do is we, those who enroll, it's a free program. You can enroll at, uh, every calendar year, and you, re you can receive up to four cab vouchers per year. Uh, the, each voucher uh, can ha be used for up to $40 worth of travel. Uh, and again, that is uh, to make sure people who use public transportation feel confident that in case something arises, uh, such as overtime, where they're going to have to stay later than uh, what uh, they had planned, and may, we may not have a bus route that's working at night uh, for the route that they take, or it could be that they uh, have a, a kid uh, who is sick at school and they need to pick them up right of way, uh, and they have, need to get there quicker than what we can take them. Uh, this provides that opportunity for them. Uh, last year we had 253 enrolled, uh, but only seven actually uh, used a voucher. So again, people see the value of it and they uh, honor how it's used and they uh, only used it when they needed to. Uh, we receive those vouchers in from the cab company and then we submit another voucher, or we mail out another voucher to the, uh, those who are participating. So I just wanted to let you know that that's going on right now and for the benefit of those who may be watching today. Uh, and then also we had the transit forum on December 15th. Uh, we learned uh, quite a bit that night just uh, by uh, hearing the questions that people have from the audience. Many of you are there and we appreciate your attendance and your support there. Uh, we have seen uh, since the event KGOU, they have uh, followed up with the story as well as the Oklahoman. And uh, we have learned that OETA is preparing a segment uh, that will possibly air in sometime in January or February, but there's no date uh, set for that yet. Uh, that entire event can be viewed, though, on the Oklahoma Watch website if you'd like to go there. And I believe the KGOU website has a link to it uh, also. They said there was about 55 in attendance and pretty much standing room only. So it's a, it a pretty popular event that, that uh, December night. Uh, real quick, we're going to uh, just remind you, we launched uh, the operation of credit cards in the month of December uh, at the Transit Center, I should say. And uh, with the help of uh, our finance division, we're, we've learned a, a little bit about that. Uh, uh, we had 276 transactions take place in that first month, uh, and the average transaction amount was $21. Uh, you may also recall in July, we launched the EmbarkOK.com online store. Uh, and since that opened, we've had 138 transactions and uh, $69 is the average transaction amount uh, for that period. So we do see uh, usage of that, and we think that it's a value and a benefit to those uh, to offer a, a payment option 
Now, with this new technology, there are fees assessed by the banks, so it's important to kind of understand what that cost is uh, to have these services there. And so of the sales that we had, we had $13,594 of total sales to date. Uh, and about 5.5% of those sales go toward the credit card fees, and that turns into about $742.68. Uh, so that's just to give you a gauge about uh, the, the cost of providing that service uh, to our customers. Uh, the next thing we'd like to uh, just show you, this is uh, uh, this transit system map for the night service. Uh, on the screen here, uh, what we wanted to do is to make sure people understood the full uh, network uh, of our services that we are going to be offering until midnight. Uh, it's a little difficult to see uh, from the projector screen, but uh, what we've done here is we've combined all the services that you're, you'll be able to take advantage of at night. And to uh, avoid any confusion, wanted to make people uh, aware of which routes were specifically available uh, and also the link services and where they could uh, take advantage of those stops uh, as well as the downtown discovery that continues to run uh, weekdays and in the evening. And then finally, we uh, were very fortunate and we're very proud of the feature that we uh, had in the Velocity magazine, which is produced by the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce. Uh, this magazine is a digital magazine. It goes out uh, a few times a year. And uh, this is a, a very interactive style uh, piece that they put out. There's a video. Uh, all of the, There's different pieces that are clickable. They go to the uh, Spokies website. Uh, it's things like this that help uh, increase our brand awareness and uh, just awareness of the service. So we're very appreciative and very proud of the feature that we uh, see before us here. And with that, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have. Uh, I don't know if it's so much a question as a comment, but I'm really looking forward to the marketing of the increased night services to the south and north side. As you remember, when I first joined, I was thrilled to see on my door the hangar advertising the 23rd Street one. And I live in the Paseo. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all do um, on social media, but just that on the ground reach outreach to uh, what is going to be predominantly a Hispanic population, right? And a lot of working class uh, people of all ethnicities and background to live on the south side who might not know about even some of the improvements we've already done. So I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, you all build on the success that you have had so far. So. Very good. Thank you. We've been working on those materials. Uh, what we, uh, We've learned from that first round of night service and have tried to refine that and, and hone uh, you know, the, the tools that we're using to reach out to individuals. Uh, and. Uh, trying to add some things to there as well to make sure that we have as much reach as possible. All right. Thank you. Uh, also, <clears throat> for the trustees' benefit, there was a handout, and I think the one item interesting, of course, is the trustees' uh, term, but on the back is the fee for parking and transit that might be of interest to, uh, to any of the trustees that was part of your handout. All right, River Cruises. Good morning. I hope you all had an opportunity to attend the 11th Annual Holiday Boat Parade this year. It was a very well attended and, and a very nice event. Um, in your packet is our report of uh, ferry and um, the Spokies system. Our ferry ridership is maintaining and even exceeding in many months the target of 10 riders per service hour. On average, we're over our target, and we may be needing to adjust our target here in the next uh, year or so. Uh, currently, staff is working with HMS to develop the 2016 schedule. Again, we're looking for efficiency, more riders per service hour, and focusing uh, this uh, coming season on growing some of those revenues. Uh, we did have some uh, budget savings that uh, aren't, aren't reflected in the financials as yet, but, but will be seen that we will be utilizing to increase some of our uh, specialty cruises and uh, develop some more charter business to in grow our revenues. Later this month, HMS will be pulling the Devon Discovery out of the river for maintenance. This vessel's been in the water since October 31st, 2007. Uh, it has been pulled out 
uh, at least one other time for some maintenance on the drive shafts. But this time it will be completely stripped, repainted, and new graphics will be applied, and then some work on the drive shafts and the generator will be performed to bring it back up to uh, nearly new condition so that we'll be able to start with a full season with a, a fully refurbished vessel. And then each subsequent year we'll, we'll do the same thing with the other two vessels. As for bike share, we have a membership drive going currently in social media. Um, you have uh, on your desk in front of you a special card that you can use to get a discounted annual membership. Annual memberships are normally $75 a year with a card, or excuse me, $72 a year. With the card, you can get a membership for $60 for an annual membership. And then, we, of course, we have the rack card to grow awareness uh, of our bike share system. Currently, our procurement department and finance are reviewing the request for proposals that were received for new bike share equipment. And once that is completed and they've made a selection, we hope to be able to uh, bring in some equipment that is more sustainable and more attractive and more user-friendly for our bike share users. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And I don't know if we monitored, but do we feel the connection between the river and the Bricktown Canal that that was successful this year? We saw a lot of passengers board and depart from there. We sold some of the water taxi bands, uh, probably not as many as we'd hoped, but we did have some water taxi bands that we were able to provide. The water taxi system is, is very accommodating. We're able to uh, radio them up and tell them how many people we have coming, and they make sure that there's a water taxi available to pick up those people. So it's been, it's been a very smooth system, and uh, we're very pleased with how it's been operating. Good. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Any questions? Thank you. And our last program report is streetcar report. Uh, Jason, are you going to give us? Sure. I'll hit a uh, couple of things from the streetcar report. Um, it is a new report, so of course we're open to uh, feedback, suggestions, uh, anything uh, additional that you want to see that maybe isn't included in the report. And we do expect this report to kind of evolve as we get closer and closer to operations. It's probably going to change a little bit. but. Um, you'll notice um, it's organized um, uh, in, in four different categories. One is kind of an op, uh, uh, update on operations. One provides kind of an update on mainline track design. We have a section for storage and maintenance facility design, and then vehicle procurement. And so um, probably the, the two most significant things to, to discuss um, from the report this month are one related to operations. Um, as you'll recall, on De uh, December 4th, the uh, Board of Trustees approved our agreement with SOJ. Um, they're the ones assisting us with developing our operations plan and potential RFP uh, for a streetcar operator. We had our kickoff meeting with them on uh, December 16th and uh, kind of laid out the initial stages of our work plan, which will include um, updating our operations plan, um, having some stakeholder meetings that will involve other city departments, essentially anybody that's going to be connected to the streetcar when it uh, begins operating, and then, of course, preparing for um, the RFP. So we had a good kickoff meeting with our consultant. Um, and then the other thing um, I wanted to, to speak about was just kind of some of the work we've been doing, working alongside the MAPS office, the um, uh, MAPS uh, consultant team, um, the streetcar subcommittee meeting, what we have been involved in is uh, reviewing and looking at about 12 different options on how the streetcar route might be altered or deviated to serve the convention center now that the new convention center site has been identified. So again, we're very early on in that process. Um, we have 12 options. We've certainly got to continue to narrow those down. Uh, but it was um, a, an initial uh, collaborative effort between MAPS, COTPA, the consultants for the park and the convention center, along with the subcommittee that have gotten us to the point where we're at now. So we would expect just, again, to continue to look at those options, determine which ones make the most sense, which ones are going to fit within uh, budget constraints, and continue to keep the trustees um, updated. All right. Thank you. Any questions? 
then I guess we need to go into exe executive session. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Yes, I uh, need a motion to approve our program reports. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Good. Yeah, I was I was and I was thinking it's like should I have done that? Like it was I yeah. I, 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 do, I, I should have asked about it. sharing the interior apartment thing together. And so, uh, you know, we passed the time the best we could. We went to South Padre one day, which was nice. It was kind of close. Yeah. And then there was bad weather, like got canceled. Oh, right. So we rented a Tahoe and put my wife and I, stepsister and husband, their two kids, Yeah, I mean, you know, it was, they bought it by side, so it was comfortable and it could be, you know, yeah. carry a full car for 12 hours, so. <laughs> yeah, wow. But, it, you know, we made the most of it, had some fun. Well, good. Okay. Bonding. 
tried it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you tried uh, our new brew? The orange top? Oh, I don't know that he's brought me any. He should. He needs Cause to. Because it's, it's done. It's an orange chocolate yeah. stout. He's finished his bottles and took some home with him. He probably so. took the Ashley. <laughs> We'll make them get you some. It's really good. Yeah, I will. Thanks.
right. Uh, before we adjourn, I would have a motion to approve item J. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Any comments from any of the trustees? And I would say we're adjourned. Thank you.